I'm Ryan. I'm a science teacher. I'm Cheryl, and I slept through science. Each episode will tackle a science question you may have learned in school, but can't quite remember or fully explain. And I'll take the risk of asking the dumb questions so that we can all understand the science we slept through. The bell has rung. Let's get started. Welcome to lesson 42. We are in a new unit this week. This is our holiday unit. Yay! <laughs> and I think that might explain a few things, Cheryl. Yeah, I really hope everyone's watching on YouTube and not just listening. Because if they're listening, they're like, "That okay, cool, I guess. But if you're watching, then you are seeing Ryan and my Halloween costumes right now. Mm -hmm. So head on over to, <laughs> to see this awesome mess. <laughs> and I think, Cheryl, yours is probably a little bit easier to tell what you're supposed to be than what I'm supposed to be. But Well, I'm a deer, although it's funny that we're doing, I mean, right. So obviously like, today is Halloween and this is kicking off our holiday unit where we kind of go through the rest of the year really with like the science behind holidays. Yeah. Um, but I also look kind of like I'm a reindeer because you do. <laughs> I don't know. I do love Christmas. So like it's possible. I'm well, it could be either one. Yeah. Deer, you're, reindeer. You're at least a, you're at least a deer. You might even be a reindeer. Yes. Yeah. And how about you? I mean, I know you are Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Do you recognize with the sash? I mean, see, that makes me think of Chewbacca. Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. I also love, and even if you're on YouTube watching us right now, you can't really tell, but we're both wearing onesies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I also love that you and I thought of this very last minute and said, let's go get costumes. And we were back minutes later. So we knew exactly Already donned with our costumes. Yes. Yeah. We knew yeah. how to find costumes quickly. Yeah. What does that say yeah. about us, Cheryl? <laughs> that we're cool. <laughs> that's it. That's, yep. That's definitely what that says about yeah. us. But for our first lesson of our holiday unit, we're going to do Halloween since today is Halloween. What is your Halloween question, Cheryl? Well, it's funny thinking about the science behind Halloween. And honestly, even if you Google it, you get a weird assortment of like, ways to make things look like brains oh, i mean um, that makes sense and i'm not a person who is into the creepy halloween so much i'm into mm -hmm. the dressing up and the trick-or-treating and pumpkin carving halloween so okay. like that's that's my jam when it mm -hmm. comes to halloween and so i was thinking about and the actual science behind halloween not like how to like make slime <laughs> <laughs> um okay and this is kind of a weird question, but um, something that has happened to me, not to me, something that I've noticed in my adult years and recent mm -hmm. Halloweens is um, after I carve my pumpkin, it starts to Can rot. Can you make it a jack-o'-lantern? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It starts to rot a lot quicker than if I just like had one sitting out on my porch. Like it, it starts like falling apart eventually or getting moldy or gross mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really curious um, why pumpkins rot faster when they become jack-o'-lanterns as opposed to if they stay whole pumpkins. I guess it is a gross okay. question. That's kind I mean, of gross. Kind of. Yeah. It depends on if you like the way things rot or not. Yeah. <laughs> so that's I mean, my question. There's an element of that that I actually find fascinating, but I'm a little weird. So, okay. <laughs> Why is it that after you've carved a pumpkin and it becomes a jack-o'-lantern, it rots faster than an uncarved pumpkin? Yeah. All right. Well, let's just start with some of your observations. When we're talking about a rotting pumpkin, what does that even mean? When you say it's rotting, what does it look Ooh. like? What does it smell like? What does it feel like? What do you, what do you associate with rot? I didn't think you were going to ask me that question. That's a really good question. <laughs> this one's okay. taking me off guard. Oh. Um, and the first thing I want to say is that it goes bad, but that's okay. even less specific than the word rot. Um, it, oh gosh. I mean, it, eventually 
it would even like disintegrate if that's okay. the right word. Like eventually. Uh -huh. Um, in the meantime, it's possible that it gets mold, although I don't feel like I've always seen them get mold. They um shrink, they get shrivelly, shriveled. Okay. Um I wouldn't want to eat it anymore because it doesn't look like it's so good as food. Any like it looks like it's like no longer safe to eat. What about it looks unsafe? Just it looks really gross. Um, like it's is it still orange? Like what what makes still it look gross? orange? It's just like the texture. The texture changes. changes. Okay. It's weird that it looks more wet and more dry. I think is like the mm. process because it's like shriveled, which seems like less moisture, but then like things can get really wet and gross as they rot. Okay. As well. Um, yeah. Just from what I've learned about food safety, I think I wouldn't trust it maybe is why I would <laughs> say that as well. I think that's reasonable. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And then um, one time, I had a Halloween party in my house and we kept a bunch of pumpkins inside for a long time. And they were actually also rotting from the inside and looked fine. And then you touched it and it just was mush. And that was oh. very gross. Okay. So it was deceiving. Um, but that wasn't carved. No, that wasn't carved. The bottom of it was all moldy underneath where it was sitting on the counter. Okay. And then it was no longer stable. Is this like, okay, we're, when we're talking about plants, because a pumpkin uh -huh. is a plant, Ryan. Yep. Um, yep. We're talking about plants and how when they're dying, their cell structure breaks down. Okay. So I'm wondering if it's the, like why I would touch the pumpkin and it would turn to mush is like part of rotting. It's no longer like mm. pumpkins are really hard. Yeah. And when they rot, you can just like with your hand make it change shape and make it fall apart mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it no longer has the same structure i think as okay. when it's not rotten okay great now let's now we sort of have talked a little bit about rot cuz that feels appropriate for halloween <laughs> um why do you think it is that when a pumpkin is carved it rots more quickly. I mean, my first guess is that it's exposed to air. Okay. Again, which I mainly think about from like when I've worked in a kitchen before and you uh -huh. don't want your food exposed to air. Why not? It, it grows bacteria faster. Okay. More, or more likely to grow bacteria or it's in, creating an environment where bacteria can grow. But that's okay. also a food temperature, and this isn't about temperature, although I would say it'd probably happen indoors quicker than it would happen outside. So okay. I think temperature is an element, but okay. as far as being carved or not, I think maybe that hard skin is protecting the inside of the pumpkin, Okay, which is not quite as, it's still pretty hard, but it's not quite as hard. So maybe that outer skin, just like a human skin. <laughs> yeah. Like not okay. being exposed to air and maybe just being near other bits of pumpkin as opposed to being like little pieces of pumpkin all out on its own. When you Which... carve it, there's like small sections. And uh -huh. when it's a whole pumpkin, it gets to be next to other parts of the pumpkin. It's just, I, oh, I, don't... <laughs> I think I see what you're saying. Whereas yeah. when it's a pumpkin, it's yeah. still part of pumpkin as opposed to when it's carved, it's like hanging out with just air around it instead of yeah. pumpkin around it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the guts are all gone. And so why, those aren't helping. Why would that make a difference, do you think? I don't know, because it's not attached to the plant anymore. So it, it's going to slowly die either way. Okay. But and it, yeah. What do you think causes? A pumpkin, whether it's whole or not, to rot. Time. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. I don't know. It okay. just it's something that happens, but it happens to all plants. 
all plants. So your house plants that are sitting in your house, given they enough time, will start they, rotting. They still have roots. All plants that have been cut off. All plants that have been cut off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then they're dying from that moment on, aren't they? Okay. And so you're saying that then that's like being dead or dying is leading to rot? Yeah. Okay. And is it the dead, like what makes a dead thing rot and not a living thing? Well, it's not getting nutrients from the soil. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. Connecting things <laughs> from our last unit. Or water. Like you can cut flowers and put them in a vase of water and it will keep them alive longer than if you don't. So then like that water would temporarily for those flowers do it. Um, okay. But in general, a plant, once you've cut it off from its roots, it's a tree branch, anything like that, then it's not going to keep getting the things that it needs. Okay. All right. You've got, uh, as usual, lots of different ideas that it'll be really interesting to kind of pull together and see what we can do to explain the answer to your question. Let's start by talking about what rot actually is, shall okay. we? Yeah, because that sounds great. That seemed to surprise you a little bit. It's just you've never thought about that before or? Yeah, I thought that word was um, self-explanatory or. <laughs> Until you had to explain it. <laughs> yeah and also it's like oh yeah in science nothing is really self-explanatory because you always ask why for everything that happens pretty much yeah, yeah. until we reach the point where we either say we don't know or because that's the way it is oh really yep interesting but that's a whole nother topic for another time <laughs> rot you described a lot of things, but one of the things you talked about was actually a big factor for it, which is mold, okay. fungus. A lot of what rotting is, is fungi breaking down whatever the thing is that is rotting. Interesting. It can also be bacteria though. Bacteria can also break things down. And that's true of anything that, well, ideally is dead. If you have something that's like alive and it's rotting, it's not going to be alive for very long. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's, it's part of, they're called decomposers. Okay. It's part of an ecosystem. And that's an important part to break those things down, take it apart and allow those things to be recycled through the ecosystem again. Mm. It's, you know, Simba and the circle of life, you know, Mufasa, that whole thing. <laughs> oh, wait. So the Lion King is about fungi? Uh, yes. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Did that's not see it going definitely what I said. Yeah. yeah. Cool. That's, that's what I said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But that's what rot is. And it makes whatever the thing is that's rotting get all gross looking because it's actually breaking it down. And you referenced cells and it is actually breaking apart the cells. So when you say it is breaking apart. The fungus. The, the fungus is breaking apart or, or the bacteria. Yeah. I didn't know that. I just apart. thought it got yeah. gross. It does get gross. Yeah, but I didn't know it was breaking apart cells. I thought it was just mm -hmm. growing new stuff on top of the old it's stuff. It's both. And if you think about it, the way that it's growing new stuff, it has to get nutrients from somewhere, oh. kind of like we talked about with plants. But fungi get their nutrients, decomposers get their nutrients by breaking down other things and taking those nutrients from those organisms. Oh, interesting. That's literally cool. the circle of life. That's yeah. literally what that is talking about. That's really cool. Yeah. And, you know, you talked about the texture changing and all of that sort of stuff. And that's all true. But the, for the most part, that's what rot is. It's mm -hmm. decomposing. And again, fungi often can look funny and it can have fuzzy parts and things. And those yeah. are what we call fruiting bodies, which are the things that allow fungi to reproduce. A mushroom is a fruiting body. You think that's funny. That's a funny term, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, and I just think, think about my cheese when it's in the fridge too long 
Uh-huh. And then there's like a little part that gets like fuzzy mm-hmm. on it. And it's like, it's very gross. Uh-huh. But it's it's just funny thinking that it's like, oh, that's the this beautiful fruiting body that's like allowing it to reproduce. Mm-hmm. I just don't want fuzzy cheese. No, definitely not. Mm-hmm. Don't want fuzzy cheese. The second part that you were talking about is what actually causes the rot in the first place. Okay. Yeah. Exposure to air. Exposure to air, yes, for a couple of reasons. One, that's where all the spores for the fungi are. I was going to ask where they come from if they just Mm -hmm. like happen out of nothing they are in the air all the time they're in the air that you're breathing in and breathing out right now and that's okay yeah they're on the surfaces of everything but most of the time it's not a problem for a couple of reasons one we have an immune system cool that's good it's it's a good thing and two the conditions aren't correct or aren't ideal for the fungi to grow Fungi tend to like, and bacteria, so molds and things like that, like warm, moist environments. The danger zone. Exactly. And that's why we use things like refrigerators for our food. It makes it take that much longer for those things to be able to do what they need to do. And if you think all the way back to our hot and cold unit, do you remember our hot and cold unit? Yeah. Yeah. When something is hotter, what does that tell us about its molecules? They're moving faster. Exactly. That applies for fungi, bacteria, molds, all of those things as well. They're able to grow faster when the temperature is warmer because all of the molecules move faster. So they're able to do all of their living things at a faster rate. Well, I didn't know it applied to that. That's really cool. Yeah. That's why wow. freezing things and refrigerating them preserves them for longer. Or cooking them so that it's so hot that it kills them. Yes, exactly. In addition to if a pumpkin, a carved jack lantern is in some place that's too warm, you may also have noticed that even though here in the Seattle area, when we put them outside, sometimes even it being cold causes problems. Have you ever noticed that? Oh. Do they freeze or something? Yes. If it gets oh. below freezing, what that'll do is, and I think we may have talked about this in a previous lesson, but I don't remember for sure. When a cell freezes, a cell is made up mostly of water. It bursts. It does. We it did ha- talk about this. Yeah. And overwatering your plants, right? I don't think that's when we talked about it because this has to do with freezing. And when it freezes, when the water inside those cells freezes, Mm -hmm. it freezes in sort of a crystal shape, which are pointy and spiky, and they can actually poke holes in the cells. And then once they thaw, now the cells have holes in them and all the liquid leaks out, which is why sometimes they get wetter, which you talked about. Yeah. And And that's also why they can like lose their structure. So you poke on the pumpkin and it kind of collapses. Yes. Yeah, totally. That can be a factor too. If it freezes overnight, that can be a problem. So you don't want it too hot and you don't Mm -hmm. want it too cold. And even with that, you still have the fact that there's a much greater surface area that's exposed to the air. And you talked a little bit about the protective kind of skin almost of the pumpkin. Mm -hmm. And that's true. You notice the outside of the pumpkin is a different texture than the inside of the pumpkin. Yeah. And the outside is designed to help repel a lot of those things that could break it down. The inside isn't made to do that. When you cut open the top and take all that stuff out, now you're exposing part of the pumpkin that isn't built to resist quite as well. And it's much more likely and it's more moist. So it's much more likely to allow fungi and bacteria to start growing on it because it's the conditions and the environments that are better for it. So when you make a jack-o'-lantern, you are killing it faster. Well, yes. Whether or not it's actually already dead is a whole nother thing that's hard to determine. Like at what point do you call it dead or whatever? But yeah. And you also (laughs) mentioned that all plants would rot eventually. Yeah. Which is true. 
all organisms. Oh, all yeah. like, you know, animals too will rot eventually mm -hmm. if they're dead. Because, and that's actually a good thing for the environment and for the yeah. ecosystems, right? And just like humans, I talked about we have an immune system. Plants have an immune system too. Really? Yeah. It's not oh, wow. quite as robust as our immune system. It works a little bit differently, but they're fighting off bacteria and fungi all the time while they're alive as well. So again, once you've cut it off from the plant, you said it doesn't have any nutrients anymore which is true. It doesn't have a source of nutrients, but it also doesn't have a chance to replenish any of those immune system things that can fight stuff off. So all of those factors are all working against your pumpkin once you've kind of carved it. Maybe I'll paint pumpkins this year. Instead. You could paint pumpkins. There's also <laughs> several strategies that the internet recommends to <gasps> kind of slow down or reduce the rot. Can I guess they, one? Yeah. Hairspray. That was not one that they recommended. Okay. Well, never but mind. Maybe. The the <laughs> challenge with hairspray is it's pretty flammable. <laughs> which means if you're gonna put a candle in your pumpkin, <laughs> may not be a great idea. I didn't even think about that part. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay, what yeah. are they? But thinking along the same lines, they're kind of, you know, making them a little bit drier. So mm -hmm. after you carve it out get like a paper towel or something, kind of dry it out so there's it's not as moist. You can coat it with something. They Sometimes they recommend oil, although again, that can be flammable. And also I think that can go rancid too. So mm -hmm. I, I'm not so keen on that. They even talked about like around the carved portions, even like a petroleum jelly, like a Vaseline or something that makes a barrier between the air and it might yeah. help a little bit because then again, those spores aren't getting in and they need oxygen too. They're, yeah. So if they are cut off from the oxygen, they're not able to grow. So there's a couple nice. different ideas. You can try some. Yeah. Run some experiments. Of a very slippery pumpkin. It'll be good. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's time for your first holiday quiz. See, usually on the holidays and we like don't have school so much or we have less school or it's like, it's we're just going to have like a party let's have like a class party instead we, will. we just do the quiz first oh, then we do the party dude, i keep learning what kind of teacher you are and i don't know how <laughs> i feel about it <laughs> all right your first question what is rot fungi and bacteria breaking down a formerly living organism as it dies to complete the circle of life and put it back into the environment to be used for other purposes. <laughs> Your face is like, are you still going? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if you're saying all of these things because you're, it's just taking a while to process or if you are trying to draw out your answer to sound smart. <laughs> Hey, you've admitted to doing that before. Yeah, that's true. But I think this was like trying to make sure I cover all the bases okay. and see how, how much I can add to it out of curiosity. Okay. Really. Everything you've said is great. It doesn't feel like BS, but that's where I was. That's the expression you were seeing on my face. I was trying to figure yeah. out, is she trying to just get by or is she actually thinking about this? And okay. then the ants eat it and then it fertilizes the plants and contributes to the growth of new life. This is when I stop reading the answer. <laughs> 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 All right. What environmental conditions are extra beneficial or increase the rate at which fungi and bacteria grow on things? Warmth. Okay. Moisture. Mm -hmm. Exposure to air. Yeah. Great. Why are warm temperatures things that are good for increasing the rotting rate? Because molecules move faster when they're warmer. And so then the little, the little fungi molecules are moving all around and spreading over the pumpkin more and reproducing more and just like going all over the place 
super fast. I really wish you all were on YouTube right now and watching this <laughs> because Cheryl has her two little fingers that apparently are fungi and they're like moving up and down and then her fingers spread out and then they go back to the two fingers po going up and down and it's great. It's great. Listen, I am trying to get through this quiz so that we can have our class Halloween party. <laughs> And hand motions help. <laughs> Great. Why are cold temperatures bad for pumpkins? Um, well, first of all, we did figure out that it was the liquid nitrogen lesson mm -hmm. where we talked about the cell walls of plants shattering when they freeze, being shattered when they froze. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because we talked about smashing the rose. If you have not mm -hmm. listened the liquid nitrogen lesson, it's pretty fun. Um, it is pretty fun. That one is lesson 15. Thank you. Yep. Um, and I also just answered the question. You the, sort of did. There's water inside of the plant cell. When it freezes, water expands. And then it pokes the wall of the cell. Like a um, icicle mm -hmm. and breaks the cell wall. Is, is, the, is three fingers an icicle? Well, this, I had another hand, but it's not a frame. Oh, okay. So like it's going and breaking the cell All wall. All the hand motions today. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then if it were go to go back to normal temperature, it would just be mushy mm -hmm. because it no longer has the structure of yep. a cell wall oh all like the that. great hand motions this is <laughs> I, this is wonderful i should Bonus always points. do hand motions for these quizzes it makes it more fun <laughs> <laughs> last question why don't live pumpkins usually rot well they have an immune system they do. that is getting replenished as they're getting the other things they need to live, which we really thoroughly covered in our house plants unit. Mm -hmm. um, and also they're still alive. Uh-huh. So like they're still growing and being healthy and living. And also they have skin. Mm -hmm. So that's not being exposed to air. Cause I think if like, if you had a pumpkin on a vine and you just like cut out a chunk of it, then it mm -hmm. makes me wonder like if some of that would start rotting, mm -hmm. even though it's still alive. Yeah. It'd probably have a harder time not rotting, you yeah. know, like battling that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. The, the part where you said that it's alive, that the, that's really the same thing as that it has an immune system. Oh, okay. It's really, cause when it's no longer alive or at least no longer connected, that's where the immune system is going to run out eventually. It can't mm. be replenished, can't get more nutrients to keep it doing what it's doing. Got it. That makes sense. And then yeah. also, yes, the fact that there's a protective skin, that if you've removed that, it increases yeah. all those things. Yeah. Is Wait, can I ask you a follow-up question then? Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> I suppose, I suppose because you did such amazing hand motions, I'll let you ask a follow-up question. <laughs> I remember learning in school that um, if you remove a tree's bark, mm -hmm. you will likely kill it. But if you hollow out a tree, it could stay alive. And I'm wondering if that is similar to like if you peeled a pumpkin that was alive, you might kill it. Like it's being exposed. No. Is I think the bark that's, doing something different? Well, I would have to do some more research on that question before I could answer it pretty quickly. What okay. I think it probably is, so the, the bark bark is not actually alive, but the very inside of it, there's a, there's a couple of layers on depending on the tree. Um, and now I don't remember which is which, but there's the xylem and there's the phloem which allow, those are certain types of cells and tissue that allow both nutrients and water to flow through the plant. Mm, okay. And so if you remove that, that causes issues, obviously, because yeah. then it can't get what it needs. And so if you're talking about hollowing it out, but if it left part of that, I wonder yeah. if that's what it's talking about. Yeah. I would need to find out more to, and remind myself exactly where all of those parts are. But that would be my initial thought. 
Okay. So not much. the same reason as if I don't you think peeled so. a pumpkin. I don't think so. We better do an, a lesson on that then at some point. Write it down. All right. But that's all the time that we have for our lesson today. So why don't you gather up your costume and all of your accessories and any candy that you've gathered from our amazing party that we had uh -huh. and get ready for my closing remarks. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at I Slept Through Science or on Twitter at Slept Science. If you have dumb science questions like I do, please send them to us. You can email us at isleptthroughscience at gmail.com, or you can even send us a voice memo and we'll play it on the podcast. Please rate and review our podcast to tell other people what you think about it. Subscribe to make sure you don't miss an episode and share about our podcast on social media. Thank you to Beth Reed Miller for the artwork. You can check out more of Beth's artwork at Beth is something. Okay, great. Thanks. Bye. Ah! The bell doesn't dismiss you. I dismiss you.